right, let's take a look at your market news. China's yuan ticked up higher against the dollar on Wednesday as heavy corporate demand for the local currency outweighed broad greenback strength and an amicable meeting between the leaders of the United States and China broadly supported the investor mood. Presidents Joe Biden and Xi Jinping held an hours-long virtual meeting on Tuesday. Although it appeared to yield no immediate outcomes, it gave the two leaders an opportunity to nudge their relations away from icy confrontation that we used to. Chinese blue chips were steady and Hong Kong benchmarks slipped 0.4% as a short rally in developer and casino stocks ran out of steam. Japanese shares reversed course to end lower on Wednesday as concerns over rising costs and a weaker yen outweighed strength in technology heavyweights tracking overnight Wall Street gains. The Nikkei share average fell 0.4%. Japan's Nikkei fell around 0.4-0.3% on fears that the strong dollar would mean higher costs for imported material for manufacturers. U.S. stocks closed higher on Tuesday as retail sales data signaled solid consumer health and eased worries about a Federal Reserve that may have to become more aggressive in the face of rising inflation. Data showed retail sales jumped 1.7 percent in October. That's the largest gain since March. The Dow Jones Industrial Average rose 0.15 percent. The S&P 500 gained 0.39 percent and the Nasdaq Composite added 0.76 percent. Let's take a look at your other markets. Right, let's speak to Michael Tran from Vestec Asset Management. A very good afternoon to you, Michael. Thanks so much for your time. We saw two very good days for the JSC yesterday and the day before. What's happening today? Yeah, afternoon in Zynga. Uh, market's looking a lot more mixed today. Uh, JSC all share up 0.5%, so that's good news. Um, and that's just ge generally following overall uh, global positive sentiment. Uh, you know, U.S. markets have been trading at record highs uh, for a number of months now, and the JSC seems to be playing catch-up, which is uh, great news for our local market. Mm -hmm. um, we saw that the Turkish lira was falling to its lowest. I saw you commenting on that online as well. What lessons can be learned from that fall, and did it affect other emerging market currencies? Uh, I think we've reached the point where the Turkish lira doesn't impact uh, other emerging market currencies as much as it used to. Uh, the rand used to have uh, quite a big negative impact when anything negative happened in, in Turkey, but that seems to, the market seems to have got used to that. Uh, effectively, what's happening in Turkey is the government's interfering with the money supply and uh, not letting the central bank do what it needs to do. Um, and that creates uncertainty in international markets, and it means that uh, people are pulling money out of Turkey, mm -hmm. uh, which means that the, the currency gets weaker. Um, and that's it's trading at an all-time low as we speak. Um, and that's bad news for, for residents because as the currency gets weaker, uh, things get more expensive in the country. Not, not great news. All right, not great news for us then. Last time I checked, the rand weakening against the dollar. What's driving that? Yeah, currently around 1550. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's uh, the, the rand, or I shouldn't say the rand, the dollar itself is looking very, very strong. Uh, those retail sales figures that you were speaking about earlier came in much better than people were expecting, uh, pointing to a much stronger U.S. economy than uh, was estimated. And the result is that more people want to put their money into the U.S. for investment purposes. Um, so a strong inflow of, of, of dollars into the country uh, means that the rand weakens against against the U.S. US dollar. So that, that's what's happening there. Um, where do we go from here? Who knows? Um, but the trend at the moment is definitely for a stronger dollar, which is not good for our local currency. Mm. I know you've touched on it in our chat already, but let's talk about the U.S. markets up yesterday. What's driving that? And just give us a sense of what's happening in the U.S. market. The main thing at the moment is, is the focus on, on the Fed, what's happening with the economy, when, is, when will interest rates be increased, um, yesterday's retail sales figures were really a big milestone for the U.S. because consumer sentiment has been coming in very poor, 
but uh, it looks like people are still spending a lot of money in the economy. Um, mm -hmm. And that's sort of a divergence from what we've seen in the past, where generally where there's weak consumer sentiment, there's weak spending. Um, we're not seeing that, and the strong economic data in the U.S. is good news for the U.S. in general, um, but also globally. Uh, the U.S. is a, a very big importer uh, globally of all sorts of materials, so a strong U.S. Is, has a secondary effect for the rest of the world. Um, and that's why we're seeing strong markets in the U.S., because consumers are spending uh, all their money. Mm -hmm. Let's come to company news in South Africa and what's happening with Woolworths. Sure. Tough trading update this morning. Uh, stocks down between 6 and 7 yeah. percent. Uh, effectively, lockdowns in Australia uh, has, have hurt them quite badly. They've seen sales in Australia drop 17 percent. Uh, locally, things are a bit better, but uh, lockdowns and the rights in the middle of the year uh, didn't help. Um, they say they're expecting profits to drop by at least 20 percent. Uh, we'll have to wait for their full update to see exactly what's happened. Um, but the numbers were weaker than the market is expecting, and it, it looks like uh, it's a long road to turning around that Australian business, which has been the, the problem child for a few years now. Yeah, I don't know if it's fair to compare the ShopRite results that we saw yesterday and the Woolworths one. People uh, saying that how can ShopRite do so phenomenally well when they have the same kind of market and the same kind of goods as Woolworths, perhaps on a different scale, and Woolworths is doing so badly. Uh, Woolworths has been under a bit of a cash crunch, crunch for the last few years, mm. uh, where management have been in a position where they've had to keep uh, capital expenditure down. Um, and as a result, I think if you walk into some of their stores, uh, you know, it's not as well stocked as you would have expected. Yes. Uh, potentially, uh, it, it's not the same experience as it used to be. Absolutely. Um, so that's, that's one side from Woolworths. But also ShopRite uh, said, you know, we don't really want to play in the rest of Africa, but uh, we're going to focus more on the South African market and we're going to move more into the premium brands. Um, mm -hmm. So you'll see that a lot of checkers outlets are now starting to be revamped uh, to, buy, to be direct competitors with, with Woolworths. So Woolworths is a lot of pressure locally. Um, and then also in, in Australia, that asset's just been uh, terrible. Since Punishing the day them, them, yeah. So, Management has to split between the two, and it's tough. All right. As we end off, Michael, we saw yesterday Rivian overtaking Volkswagen um, in terms of the most valuable car maker on the market, now listed as the third one. They've made less than 100 cars. What's happening? <laughs> uh, people are betting that it's the next Tesla. Um, okay. you know, even Tesla makes a few cars each year. So Tesla's are about a million cars a year. Rivian's less than 100 in its total lifetime. Uh, what does help is that Amazon's a 20% shareholder and has placed a massive order for, for electric vans. Um, and, and people think that the founder's amazing. So the bet here is that it's the next Tesla. Uh, can they deliver the cars to justify the, the valuation? Uh, I suppose we'll see in years ahead. But uh, for me, I'm sitting on the sidelines watching. Thanks. <laughs> Michael Tran from Vestec Asset Management, thanks so much for your time. On SABC News, it's time for a short break. I'll have more business for you when we come back.